is separated from the node. There is no, there's no right to pay. What? All right, let me break it down. The mortgage is an accessory to the note. Right. The mortgage secures the debt. The promissory note is the promise to pay that debt. If they are separated, the mortgage is null and void. There's a lot of people that's paying on mortgages where the holder hold only the mortgage, but they don't own the promissory note. There's no legal right to collect. Damn. There's people right now that they're paying someone who holds the note. The note by itself is worthless without the mortgage. The mortgage is the debt. The note is the promise. They are accessories. They must travel together. And yeah. a lot of people that got pushed out of their homes illegally due to foreclosure, the persons that were foreclosing didn't hold the note and the mortgage. You cannot foreclose if you don't own the note and the mortgage. You have to own both. It's not either or. If you own only one, the ob there is no obligation. It is null and void. This is a Supreme um, Court case ruling. Damn, that's a real game right there. Y'all can go look it up. Supreme Court case ruling. The mortgage must travel with the note. Go ahead. Wow, that's a real game right there. No, auto loans. We got a lot of luxury cars. Yeah, there, right? There. All right. I'm going to give you all some other game now. How to delete auto loans from your credit. Closed or open, it doesn't matter. Right. You can delete any account that you want off your consumer report. Right. Damn. So I, I know a lot of y'all will dispute and then you'll hear, all right, you know, the bank said, oh, we have to report this by law. What law? What law? I challenge any banker, any firm, any consumer reporting agency, show me the law that says you have to report anything to a person's consumer report. There is no law. The law says you may report and the consumer must give permission. So there's a law. It's called the Graham Leach Bailey Act, right? Yeah. 15 USC 6802, right? But before I go to 6802, I want to go to 6801, right? right. I'm going to go to 6802. I'm going to give you all the card game in a minute. But because I'm going to pass 6801, I'm going to give you all some student loan game right now. Just, just a little bit of student loan game. Yeah. All right. Protection of non-public personal information, right? Student loans are not public information. It's not. Right. That's private information, right? And the law says that it is the policy of the Congress that each financial institution, those that extended those lines of credit to you, those student loans, they have an affirmative and continuing obligation to respect the privacy of its customers and to protect the security and confidentiality of those customers' non-public personal information. Well, if Congress says this, the first thing I want to know is what does privacy mean? Protection from protection from people. Correct. What does confidentiality mean? Yeah. It's not something that you can just share with everyone. Right. So if, if these institutions are supposed to protect my privacy and confidentiality of my non-public information, where does a student loan servicer that you don't even have a contract with there is no contract because you might have gotten the uh, alleged loan from like a Sally May Department of Education or one of these government agencies. But where did Nailnet come from? Who, who is that? All right. How are you reporting as a creditor when there is no contractual obligation between me and Nailnet? Wow. Yeah. But furthermore, the law also says this. Your information must be protected against breaches. Well, these companies share your information with Experian. Well, didn't Experian have a, a data breach? That's a, that's a violation of this law. Wow. That's, that's what... money you can potentially get if you decide to go and sue them. Well, let me, let me, let me take it a little bit, a little bit, one more step further. 6802. I told y'all y'all can delete anything, right? Now I'm going to prove it. 15 U.S.C. 6802. 
obligations with respect to disclosures of personal information. Bro, these are law. I'm Jamaican. I wasn't even born here. I came here 13 years ago. These laws were here before I got off the plane. Right. I'm just a messenger, but I'm telling you guys, when I learned this stuff, everything changed. Wow. The whole credit game changed. I didn't need to study regular credit. Regular credit to me now is trash. Yeah. Why? Because I can do whatever I want with the laws. It is written. And exactly. their laws, their laws says, brother, it says, 15 U.S.C. 6802B, opt out. A financial institution may not, may not, it's a choice. They don't have to report anything. It is a choice. There is no law that says they have to report anything. It is a lie. Damn. It goes back to double speaking. A financial institution may not disclose non-public personal information to a non-affiliated third party unless. So let's break that part down. A non-affiliated third party. So if you own company A, right? And company A has a subsidiary, company B. They are affiliated by common interest and ownership. But now if there's a company C that you don't own. So I like to use Truist and Lightstrip. They're affiliated by common ownership. TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, Truist has nothing to do with them. They don't own those companies. That's a non-affiliated third party. So Truist can share information between Lightstream and Truist Bank, right? But when it comes to TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, the consumer must get three disclosures before that information can be exchanged. And the consumer must agree to it. Yeah. So... <laughs> Yeah, that's deep. So now, this, this is what the law says. A financial institution may not disclose non-public personal information to a non-affiliated third party unless A, such financial institution clearly and conspicuously discloses to the consumer in writing or in electronic form or other form permitted by the regulator regulations prescribed under Section 6804 of this title that such information may be disclosed to such third party. This is double language. All this is simply saying that, okay, we're going to report, Doreen, we're going to report your information. That's all that is saying. But you see how much stuff is in there just to say that? Right. That's the first thing. This is what 95% of all consumers get, the first disclosures. The first disclosure, which is A, they don't get B and they don't get C. But you cannot give A without giving B and C. And B says, the consumer is given the opportunity, right, before the time that such information is initially disclosed to direct that such information not be disclosed to such third party. So what B is saying is that, okay, Doreen, we're going to report your information. But before we report your information, we're going to tell you that we're going to report your information, and if you decide that you don't want this information reported, this is where you sign. Wow. And then C now says this. The consumer is given an explanation of how the consumer can exercise that non-disclosure option. So if I decide not to have my information reported, they no need to tell me what I need to do so my information does not get reported. <laughs> 